Scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, throw that beautiful champagne footage. For your invitation, champagne. to experience the clean, the chaos, and all of the empowerment secret you desire. You know we got some Hella hood with class, baby, I'm doing one Come sip and save us so we can spill some And if you lost your way, we'll leave a light on chime in on how people are making it right now in America with inflation at an all-time high, uh, people that are making $35 an hour, 40 bucks an hour are still broke. So you wonder, am I the only one feeling this? I know you guys are driving around in your city, seeing people still at the grocery stores, still in the fast food lines, still acting as everything is normal. But there's one thing that if you haven't noticed, people are not using their money to survive right now. They're using credit cards. And if you look at America's credit card usage right now, it is at an all time high. Most families are already maxed out. And I'm going to tell you one thing that's going to send everything into a, let's say a bad spot. They're not going to pay these credit cards back. They're spending knowing that they're not going to pay these credit cards back. And so now that these people's credit cards are maxed out and credit companies are no longer giving them money to survive and buy their food. because we, ha- we don't have any help in our food. If you make money like I make money, you go to that grocery store or your wife goes because I haven't been in that grocery store and I don't know how long. But my wife goes to the grocery store. And if we don't spend six or seven hundred dollars on a grocery trip i'm surprised but i'm my, I'm di- my situation is different i have a lot of kids but you wonder how people are making it out here and they are not making it off their own money plus let's put the other thing in perspective you have the government saying that job numbers are are through the roof they have created so many jobs and people are taking these jobs 
And that's not true. The fact of the matter is, people are taking on second jobs and third jobs just to put food on the table for their family. Mind you, in the richest country in the world, something's not right. If you are somebody out there surviving right now, taking care of your kids, and you are, your money's going up, I salute you. But 99% of people right now, their pockets are suffering. Badly. To the point where the government even said that by the end of this month, most likely, 99% of Americans will have run out of any savings. Wow. American dream is dead. It is over. Gone and forgotten. Can somebody explain to me why I make over three times the federal minimum wage and I cannot afford to live? And I do not want to hear the pull yourself up from your bootstraps, work 90 hours a week. That should not be our standard. When my parents were my age, they both made less than half of what I make and they lived alone. I cannot afford to live anywhere alone. A one bedroom apartment, $1,800. Two bedroom apartment, $2,200. Who can afford that? It is embarrassing to come out and say that it is a struggle to survive right now. But I know so many people are struggling. And do not get me started on what my grandparents were doing. They, $3,000 house. And yes, I understand inflation and all of the bullshit that they have been pulling with the Fed. Why are we allowing it? Why? And then I clock out of my shift. I am tired. I have to go home. And I check the news. Another 60 billion to a country nobody can point out on a map. What are we doing? Why, where has the plot gone? We have lost it, folks. We have fucking lost it. Champagne gang, fizz fam, confidence. Welcome to the Reactorium. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm the Empress, and you are joining me for grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, grab your favorite glass of bubbly. Grab one of those chase lounges over there and kick your feet up. Say hi to a few people and let's get ready to get in too. Take those glasses and raise them high in the air. You know what time it is. Are you ready? Listen, you better know who you are. You are not your mama's mistake nor your daddy's discharge. You are purpose personified. The simple fact that you are right here in this moment listening to this video means God has purpose for you and this world has need of you. Maximize every moment your destiny awaits. Here's to you, confidant, for you are worth it. Let's toast. So there was a reason why I chose to use those videos first that have to do with surviving in America because those videos are not in relation to immigrants. They're in relation to Americans born here, raised here, live here, work here, go to school here, pay taxes here. I was thinking about some names for this video. Let me tell you about a few of them. Living the real American dream, free luxury hotels, and triple the cash, immigrants only. Immigrants hit the jackpot, freebies galore, while we get the leftovers. How about living in style? Immigrants get the American dream while we get the bill. Who knew the American dream is only free if you're new? Free rides and five-star stays 
Immigrants living it up while we pay up. Welcome to America. Immigrants get the dream. We get the struggle. Because I don't know about you, but am I the only one dealing with a little struggle right now? Am I the only one having an issue that immigrants are getting five-star hotels and Americans are in debt? Immigrants are living the life we can't even afford. And the last video I showed that showed the guy's breakdown of his bills making $4,500. Most Americans aren't even making half of that. And their bills are double and triple that. So there's a real problem when Americans are scraping by. As the old people used to say, robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> And all immigrants have to do is cross a border. We have to beg for loans, but they're just getting free money. And I'm not blaming the migrants. This isn't their fault. No, I'm blaming a government who allowed this to happen. Uh-huh. I'm blaming a government who's more concerned about people fleeing to our country for fear of their country than they are about the individuals who live in this country and are afraid in the very country they live in. That's the real problem. Millions of dollars being flewed out overseas. Millions of dollars being dished out to immigrants coming into this country. Yet we have to make real life decisions standing in the grocery store. Because eggs is damn near $10. And a party pack of wings that used to be $9.99 is damn near $26. And our government don't see a problem with this. But we're going to check out these videos. Drop in the chat and have a discussion with us. And I'll be right back. Because we got a lot to cover. The migrant bragged about living off of U.S. taxpayer money. Confieso que a mí no me gusta trabajar porque me da alergia. Lionel Moreno uploaded multiple TikToks encouraging more of his fellow Latinos to come to the U.S. Y es totalmente falso que las fronteras están cerradas. Las fronteras están abiertas. Capichi para todas esas personas, muchachos. The Venezuelan migrant urged his followers to protest to free the Times Square shooter. Necesitamos pagar la fianza. Pichi, que hoy cometió un error inocentemente porque es un niño de tan solo 15 años. What do you think about Lionel Moreno? Is he wrong for encouraging more migrants to come? And what do you think about the migrant crisis? Should we protect our borders or should we let people seek asylum in our country? With the Democrats. Oh, Tensions are rising in Chicago against the migrants and the Democratic Party. Who are those people? Do you know them? Can you guarantee our safety? We call the police, but the police don't show up like 30, 40 minutes late. At that time, the person already gone for their crime they do. With safety and financial concerns, they no longer support President Biden. And the Democratic Party here in this city, in this state, and in this country is not supporting us. The oh, fight God. has shown God. us what they think about the black community all over this country. Americans are outraged as Chicago has spent $320 million on migrants this year and asking for another $150 million to build a park community for them while Chicago City closed 50 community schools due to lack of funds. But now you found money for the migrants. Oh, excuse me, not migrants, because what they are is illegal foreign more than 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Do you think it's fair how our tax money is being spent? And should it go to Americans first? area around Sacred Heart Church in El Paso, Texas looks like during migrant surges. Now take a look. Migrant apprehensions at the U.S. southern border have plummeted. It's a very different situation. It's a very different saw. scene. Pastor Rafael Garcia says migrants stopped showing up in large numbers in June when President Joe Biden's executive order barred asylum for those crossing illegally. I talked to a source familiar with the government data who says that last month, about 57,000 migrants were apprehended at the U.S. southern border, compared to 250,000 in December 2023. Migrant apprehensions have not been this low since September 2020. One of the reasons is migrants are stuck on the other side. I talked to Rafael Velasquez Garcia from International Rescue Committee, a nonprofit, and he says that a growing number of vulnerable migrants are stuck in what he calls a carousel. Migrants in northern Mexico who want to cross into the U.S. are bused to southern Mexico by Mexican authorities. 
Those migrants travel up to northern Mexico again, only to be bused back to southern Mexico, creating a round and round, never ending journey. Um, India. India? Yes. What, you too? Yeah. How long have you been walking? Can I get the walk down there? All day? All day. All day. Did you fly into Mexico and then walk the rest? Walk, walk, walk. But where did you fly into? What? Where did you fly into? What city? No, only walking. Walking. <laughs> you, how do you walk from India? <laughs> Are you from India too? Pakistan. Oh, Pakistan. Pakistan? Yeah. Pakistan? Yeah, Pakistan? Bangladesh. Bangladesh, okay. And how did, did you guys fly into Mexico? And then walk in the rest of the way? Walk? How did you get from Pakistan over to here? <laughs> you from Pakistan too? India. Oh, India? India, Punjab. India? Punjab. India. India. Okay. Yeah, we ran into some of your friends over there. Police station, Yeah, this way. Okay, thank you. It is. Okay. Thank you. Raul Castro Mata, the Venezuelan migrant, came face to face with the judge this morning. Now, he made a shocking confession to authorities, saying that he is a member of the vicious Venezuelan gang, Tren de Aragua, and that that gang is smuggling firearms into migrant shelters. So apparently, there are now weapons and gang members inside some of the city's shelters for asylum seekers, like this one right here, which creates a dangerous environment, not just for those inside these controversial facilities, but also for everyone everyone out on the streets of this city where police say their battle with a notorious dangerous gang is just getting started they're waving the guns around correct waving guns and flashing gang signs on this video the NYPD says these are suspected members of the ruthless Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua which has been infiltrating the US for the last two years take a closer look surveillance video shows a man toting a gun he's demanding customers here to hand over their watches and watches Wallets. You can see the customers give up their belongings. There's not much you can do when you got a gun near you. We feel generally very safe, so it's a bit of a surprise. It was shocking. The way that this young self-proclaimed gang member gave up the info on his fellow gang members about the tattoos, how to identify them, the practices in Venezuela, why they shoot at the cops. But the most shocking claim, the gang has been smuggling guns into city-run shelters. Trinidad Aragua members were smuggling firearms into city shelters inside food delivery packages. That way they'll have to go through the metal detector. It is believed this video was made while the gang members were in Ecuador, and its purpose is to recruit new members. Then, when you fast forward, you see the same individuals where? In Times Square. So that's our concern. New York's shelter system is now under scrutiny after claims of weapons being smuggled inside. And although critics are going to say this is an I told you so moment, what nobody's talking about is that this doesn't just prove New York is a sanctuary for immigrants, it's also a sanctuary for those who wish to live a life of crime. Because why on earth is it that New York has been selected by these gangs as the training ground for their new and growing U.S.-based army of operatives? Certainly it can't be the weather that's brought these thugs to New York. With the intent of stealing and committing violence against not just the people of this city or other asylum seekers, but also its police force who's trying to do its best to protect everyone here while dealing not just with militant gang members, but also a militant legal system, which protects those very same crooks after the police do their job and make an arrest. And critics say that right there is the real reason why we've now got a gang problem inside some of the shelters, because although 200,000 people, more than that, have come here seeking asylum, a small minority are able to work the system in their favor. Because this is a state with laws that mandate every criminal who steals or commits a low level assault get released after they're arrested and let back out on the streets to continue their lives of crime just so our progressive judges and politicians can sleep peacefully at night knowing that nobody's gonna have a criminal record on their watch but at the same time moped related robberies are up attacks on police are up and everyone in charge of stopping this wave of violence says it's bigger than any of us realize because that's what the latest gang member to attack the police told them Roosevelt Hotel, a 1,000 
thousand room shelter that also serves as the arrival welcome center for people who just came to the city. And it's full of caseworkers and aides to help people file claims for asylum. But according to testimony from one recently arrested gang member, places like this could also be serving another deeper, darker purpose. Bernardo Raul Castro Mata, the Venezuelan migrant, came face to face with the judge this morning. Now he made a shocking confession to authorities saying that he is a member of the vicious Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua and that that gang is smuggling firearms into migrant shelters. So the gentleman in this story was arrested for attacking police with a firearm after they were trying to arrest him for doing something else, which was riding his moped the wrong direction down a one-way street, which in New York, which is full of people, is very dangerous. Now, the police have been going after moped-related traffic violations because they say it's ground zero in the fight against gang-related purse and watch snatchings. And although progressive experts say cracking down on minor crimes is bad for society, police say it helps them find and arrest dangerous criminals who also also commit other crimes. Which is exactly what happened when the gang member in question was captured by these two heroic officers. But what's truly frightening are the detailed revelations he gave to authorities about how he was able to obtain weapons and how weapons are proliferating throughout the shelter system in New York. He told cops he worked for DoorDash and received the gun from a friend. Trend Day Aragua members are smuggling firearms into city shelters inside food delivery packages. That way they don't have to go through the metal detector. On June 3rd, two NYPD officers attempted to pull... So if you look at the shelter behind me, the place is crawling with security. There's a metal police barricade out front. There are several people keeping an eye on the door. And you can't get in or out of this facility without an ID that says you're allowed to live here. It seems very secure. I'm sure they've got cameras pretty much everywhere else. And there's often a police presence in front of this very same building. But that hasn't been enough to stop the flow of weapons for some reason. And that's apparently because the security here is rather lax, even though it looks rather tough. And apparently... Apparently getting inside here is easier than getting through a TSA checkpoint and getting on an airplane where they scan everything. And if you try to get on an airplane with a bottle of water, they are going to test that water to see what's in it and make sure that it's actually water. But apparently people have been able to bring food or whatever they want in here. They're only checking people. They're not checking pizza boxes or burrito bowls. Which is apparently how gang members have been smuggling weapons into facilities just like this. But before we get into how bad this problem is and why critics are saying it's an existential threat to the city, it's important to understand that these shelters, the more we learn about them from the food that's being served that makes the people inside sick, to the gangs that are now seemingly operating with impunity while inside them, all of this makes it look like these places, which are shelters, they're supposed to rehabilitate people so that those people can live normal lives, it makes it look like they're failing in that mission and that they may never accomplish it. On top of that, the shelter system here is so overcrowded that people are evicted after 30 days for single adults and 60 days for families. Which means not only are these places failing in their mission to help the less fortunate, they now have to accomplish that mission in as little as 30 days in some cases. And now we're learning that the gangs that may be operating in facilities just like this all over town are some of the worst, not just in America, but in the entire world. In court this morning, the ADA says Mata also said that shooting at police officers is what they do in his home country. It's kind of practice for Trendale Robin gang members to shoot at police officers because Venezuelan police officers shoot at gang members for minor infractions. Venezuelan police officers get shot often in my own country because criminals feel there is a chance of getting a wet. Right, so we're not just talking about a merry band of robbers who are stealing from the rich to feed the poor. That's not what's going on here. And apparently these gangs operate with a code of violence their members are forced to adhere to. And unfortunately, these criminals have found a recruitment gold mine in the city's shelter system, which have housed hundreds of thousands of people, many of whom came here seeking a better life and job opportunities. Opportunities critics say they were not dissuaded from believing in as they checked into these very same facilities. But sadly, the situation now is such that if you go by many of these places, you'll see people hanging out all day with really nothing to do. They're not here accomplishing the purpose that they set out to accomplish, and that's gotta be frustrating. But it's not an excuse for criminal activity. But even though the crime we're learning about is due to the actions of just a small minority of people, police have discovered something much more frightening than anything we've discussed so far as part of their investigation into what these gangs are really up to.
something's going on over here. All these police just came charging out of this door right over here in the back of a bus terminal. Regardless, the new challenge facing New York's finest is different than anything they've ever had to deal with in the past, that's for sure. They're waving the guns around. Correct. Waving guns and flashing gang signs on this video. The NYPD says these are suspected members of the ruthless Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua, which has been infiltrating the U.S. for the last two years. NYPD assistance. So the police have been working overtime to investigate this particular gang and learn how they're potentially using the asylum crisis as cover for their operations. Recent reports say the gang is intent on expanding its operations in the city because of our lax justice system, which make the streets of New York the perfect place to bring in green criminals and put them through a training program of sorts because they can do a whole bunch of things wrong here and never really get punished for it as long as it's not too egregious. Think about it. Where else can you ride your little moped up to a group of people eating on the sidewalk and rob them and get away? This happened three times in Williamsburg, Brooklyn last week. And although we don't know who the assailants were as they were wearing motorcycle helmets, it doesn't take an idiot to see that this is an environment criminals of all backgrounds could favor. But the idea of gang members potentially robbing restaurant patrons isn't even the worst part about all this. The scary part about all this is what police found in the online videos they discovered relating to this gang's activities. It is believed this video was made while the gang members were in Ecuador, and its purpose is to recruit new members. Then, when you fast forward, you see the same individuals where? In Times Square. So that's our concern. The NYPD says Trende Aragua has been making it over the border with the migrant influx and is getting established in New York. Yeah, this is like a promotional video from a travel agency catering to criminals who want to do something wrong. In one moment, these guys are dancing around with guns in another country, and then the next moment, they're in the middle of Times Square. They're essentially saying, just get on a bus, come to New York, join us. By the way, did you know that Times Square is a gun-free zone? That's where they filmed this. And even though this video was filmed in Ecuador, Venezuela, where the gang claims to be from, is also a gun-free country. You're not allowed to own firearms there unless you're in the military or the police force. And of course, the shelters are supposed to be gun-free zones as well. That's why pizza boxes and takeout bags are being used to smuggle things from outside the shelters to inside the shelters. Yet none of that seems to matter to the criminals that are here, flouting our laws, violating them every chance they get. What's also pretty crazy is New York City's laws aren't helping the whole firearm situation either, because even though getting caught with a weapon on our streets is a three and a half year minimum penalty, oftentimes the DA drops or downgrades those charges. Which means many times, criminals who are arrested and are on camera carrying a weapon and get released. It's tough to think that that's not something a gang wouldn't find to their advantage. The gang has gone from petty crimes like shoplifting and stealing cell phones and jewelry to all-out shootouts in the streets. Alleged gang Yet we keep hearing from some circles that the city is safer than it's ever been, that crime is down, and that this is all just overblown hyperbole in spite of the news reports and the evidence and the real people's lives who are negatively affected by this. Chicago on 79th Street, the immigrants took over an abandoned building without the owner's consent. Ashes Camel Hill gave y'all an update. So I'll be back with another update. But there's more. Y'all, they is moving. Furniture up in here now. Like they got furniture. They got. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby, yeah. What's new? I look like. Y'all, check this shit out. Y'all, they is moving. Furniture up in here now. Like, they got furniture. They got. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby, yeah. What's new? What it look like? Yeah. Yeah, it's his girl. And they were telling him, like, y'all need to get the fuck on and shit like that. Which, I mean, it ain't they fault. Whoever the fuck brought them here needs to just put their ass back in Texas. I mean, they said it was uh, Texas. Why the fuck they just can't put their ass back on the bus and send them to another damn state? Why the fuck is y'all want to be here? In Chicago, they so depressed on money and shit. We ain't the fuck getting it. Our homeless people ain't getting it. Y'all ain't doing nothing for them. Y'all giving that day. Hmm. Wayne, this a bitch. 
Y'all please excuse the makeup on my face. I just got done modeling for my two friends, Cole and I, but I got some shit to say. First of all, the math is just not mathing as of right now. Because what I don't understand is the motherfucking immigrants that crossed over into here the right way, actually seeking asylum, actually going through the process of getting a motherfucking citizenship. I got a question for y'all. For y'all motherfuckers that has been here for but that has been here for five plus motherfucking years. How long did it take for you to get citizenship? Because um the motherfuckers that just crossed into here, you know, the ones that's crossing over here illegally, that's not really for America. Yeah, um, them motherfuckers got citizenship right the fuck now. So let me ask you this shit again. How long did it take for you to get your citizenship and how long you been here and how long you been going through that motherfucking process? Hmm. Looks to me the government is doing y'all dirty as fuck because if that's what if that was the motherfucking case, how's about the immigrants that crossed over here legally the right way who went through this fucking process? How's about you get them citizenship? They gotta wait. Girl, bye. And on top of all of this, we don't know who we're letting into our country. We don't. And there has been story after story after attack after attack from illegal immigrants that are just being dumped into cities. No security. No secure facility. No therapy. They don't sit with a profiler. A psychologist to figure out what their mental state is. Nope, just go ahead. Be free, little bird. Enjoy the American dream. Meanwhile, in a lot of neighborhoods, people have to fear for their safety. Because a lot of individuals who are coming into this country are not coming into the country for asylum. They're not coming into the country for a better way of life. They're not coming into the country to improve the life of their family. They just see a whole new playground for their criminal activity. They're just like a kitty in a candy store, ready to play. Eat till you get caught. Meanwhile, we still trying to figure out how to eat. And we live here. Unless we all start trying to figure out which position bacon soda go in. Check out these videos. Oh yeah, America was it ready for the Latin American criminal. Right now as we're speaking, there are two apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado that have been taken over by Venezuelan gang members, right? To the point where they told the landlord, bro, you come around here, man, we're gonna take your life, we're gonna take your family's life, right? Landlord was scared, landlord go to local law firms and say, no, we could do about these squatters, go to the squatter laws, bro, right? He says, man, try to contact the FBI. FBI say, hey, my man, that ain't our problem, right? The Department of Homeland Security said, that ain't our problem, bro. The landlord is just like, yo, what the hell is going on? What do I do? Bro, these dudes are collecting rent on behalf of the landlord in the building. And every single time somebody moves out of one of the apartments, they're bringing in more uh, Venezuelan migrants into it. Talking about they're patrolling the building with guns. Like what? In America? No way. That shit sounds like, like something out of a movie, bro. No freaking way that's happening right now. Imagine being that landlord, bro. He probably called in the bank like, hey, yo, yeah, man, uh, the Venezuela migrants got your, your mortgage payment. It was on the Venezuela who? You owe us that money. You better pay up, bro. There's nothing he could do about it either, man. Because if he try to do something about it, he's going to get locked up. <laughs> yo, 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 I'm sorry. A lot of y'all don't like this, man. But if you're still convinced that the USA don't need a motherfucker like Trump, you got to be fucking crazy, man. Trump is the only one that's going to be aggressive of now, man. So come up with him and be like, all right, everybody, get the fuck out, man. Kicking doors down and shit. Sending everybody over there, man. Deporting everybody. At this point, man, it's needed. Whether you like Trump or not, whether you are a Democrat, it don't matter what you are, man. Uh, shit is getting fucking bad, man. And if you think it's not going to affect you, just give it enough time. Give it enough time, man, because it's only starting. So I took the time to look it up because you can't just throw stuff like this out there for me. <laughs> 
and think I'm not gonna go search for it so I looked it up so you don't have to and I found this on a website called the Sentinel so picture this you're living in what's supposed to be your peaceful little sanctuary but instead it's like you've stepped into the middle of a horror movie minus the fun and popcorn and jump scares only on the screen I mean we're talking rats roaches busted pipes and oh did i forget to mention a gang but not an american gang though so aspen grove or fitzsimmons place or 1568 gnome depending on who you ask but whatever you call it one thing is for sure this place is trouble and the city of aurora just said pack it up everybody gotta go because they're shutting it down for being how should i say this nicely a disaster so the owner of this 99 unit complex complains that it's the fault of the venezuelan gang trend de aragua who he says has turned the place into their own private headquarters according to him these guys are strolling around with assault rifles collecting his rent and basically doing everything but host a barbecue but aurora city officials are rolling their eyes harder than me at my government right now because they're saying hold up buddy this isn't about gangs it's about you not paying your bills letting garbage pile up ignoring issues since 2019 you know basic landlord duties like not letting your tenants live in what sounds like the setting for the next post-apocalyptic movie you know the city's provided a mountain of evidence showing everything from rodent infestations to sewage backups so it's no wonder they've slapped the complex with a big old nuisance label and are now shutting it down but here's my thing though if they're shutting it down due to poor living condition why does the complaint have so much about violence in it okay but that's not my business let me keep going but hold on because the plot thickens because even some of the city council members are saying yeah right this is all about those venezuelan migrants they believe the complex has been overrun by gang members despite having zero proof one council member even said that their opinions aren't up for debate like okay karen have a seat said what i said meanwhile the tenants many of whom are migrants who fled chaos in venezuela were left sitting on the sidewalk with their suitcases kids and a lot of questions they were promised shelter but when they turned around poof no hotel rooms they were lied to they received nothing but excuses <laughs> welcome to america uh-huh now apparently the city was supposed to step in with some help but what do you think happened huh? that's right some tenants say they've been left hanging with no place to go meanwhile the aurora spoke person is out here talking about no everybody's got rooms now meanwhile there are still people who are waiting it looks like the council members have even been having a little side debate going on because what's a city council meeting without you know a political brawl they're split on whether this is about health and safety or the influx of venezuelan migrants but while they argue there are migrants and people from this building trying to figure out where they're going to sleep so what do we make of this mess is it a gang ridden nightmare or just landlords who didn't do their job whichever one you think it is it's a mess and someone's gonna have to clean it up who do you think it'll be <sighs> let me pause and take a drink hold on i'm sipping on four loco tonight because this shit is crazy but on top of all of that you know as if we don't have enough gangs in the united states every other week a new one is created because where did schoolyard come from but now we have to worry about migrant gangs on u.s soil see this is why people don't leave out their house this is why this is why people are loading up their houses with weapons this is why but to make matters worse not only are they flooding into the country and overpopulating already overpopulated cities not only do we have gangs coming in taking over our streets and building but when you see the kind of money our government is paying them <laughs> check out these videos family of four in new york could get over 20 grand a month in freebies. 500 a night at a hotel, 130 a day for food, and having two kids in public school costs us five grand a month. 
We didn't even tack on Mayor Adams' $1,000 cash gift cards, the free health care at the ER, or the free phones and free lawyers, or the $400,000 in free college tuition per dreamer. Meanwhile, taxpayers with jobs in New York pay thousands to live in a closet. Of $4,498.85, I just went down this rabbit hole and you are not going to believe what I found. So I started off here. This young lady was talking about a program in New York where the migrants were receiving all of this free food and they said that that food was not culturally acceptable. So they started throwing it away. So the city of New York said, okay, fine, we'll just give y'all actual money. Program started out helping 500 migrant families. They putting these people up in hotels and they giving them these cards that they are supposed to only use at bodegas, grocery stores, supermarkets, convenience stores. And they're supposed to sign a piece of paper saying, I swear I'm only gonna use it at a bodega, a grocery store, a supermarket, a convenience store and to buy baby supplies. And they're threatening to kick them out of the program if they don't only spend the money on these things. But my thing is, if the card can swipe at Neiman Marcus, they're gonna be at Neiman Marcus. The card should only work where the card is supposed to work. Now the amount on each card is gonna be dependent on the size of the family and if they have any income coming in. So a smart scammer will make sure that you don't have any income coming in so that you can get the most bang for your buck. Here's an example. A family of four, for instance, could get about $1,000 each month and the money will replenish every 28 days. Then the program expanded to helping 15,000 migrant families. Now remember, they put these people up in hotels, giving them food, giving them baby supplies. Now at the time of this article, the city was housing just over 66,000 asylum seekers. This is how many people had arrived in just one week. And they're saying this program is supposed to cost about $10 billion through 2025. Then the mayor started giving out prepaid cash cards to these migrants. They say that they will be given about up to $10,000 each in taxpayer money with no ID check, no restrictions, and no fraud control. Now you have to also know that the city is legally required to help these people because they have a right to shelter law in place for migrants. Well, over the past two years, over 200,000 people have shown up. So of course the money is gonna run out if you're giving over 200,000 people $10,000 each, $13,000 in food stamps, $5,000 in EBT cash balance, paying for their hotel, paying for their baby supplies. You see where I'm going with this? But the part that really got me is y'all sitting here telling us taxpaying citizens that we have to raise our retirement age to the age of 70 because there's no money in the retirement fund or the social security fund, whatever it's called. And I mean, it's sad when you hear the sad stories. Of course, you don't want these people to be living in a country where they're being abused or exposed to God knows what, but there's gotta be another way. We gotta put some type of restriction on this because this is out of hand. City is planning on giving migrants a $50,000 debit card with no ID required. We want tax dollars going outside the city to buy from large corporations outside the city. We want to invest locally in our local economy, they hire locally, it'll deal with our unemployment issue. This plan will cost taxpayers $53 million a month. But New York City Mayor Adams claims this plan will help grow minority-owned businesses and boost New York City's economy. This decision has been met with harsh criticisms from New York citizens. What we getting? Oh, we getting nothing, right? At this point, I'm ready to protest. Like, who down with me? Because this don't make no motherfucking sense. I am extremely tempted to spend a few hundred dollars in gas, drive to New York and get my $10,000 debit card. But what do you think about this? Do you agree with Mayor Adams' plan to give migrants $50,000 debit cards? Comment your opinion on the situation in the comment section below. A migrant will get approximately $12.52 per day to purchase food and baby supplies. That's about 40% more than what the average low-income American wow. gets in this country on government food stamps or stamps wow. in 2022, which was about $7.59 per person per day. To put in other words, that $53 million that's being used for this prepaid debit program is double what the New York State is budgeting in 2025 for its Department of Veterans Services, wow. its Office of National and Community Service, its Division of Human Rights, and it's more than double what... In Chicago, I spoke with Christina Passioni Zayas, the city's first deputy chief of staff. She gave me insight on how the crisis is impacting the city and the state financially. Already this week, 41 buses have rolled into Chicago, and that means there are now 11,000 migrants living in shelters 
4,000 are still sleeping on police station floors and staying at the airport. Now, this is really startling. 30% of migrants here in Chicago are children. Majority of them are attending Chicago public schools. Right now, the state is footing the bill for what they call temporary housing apartments and homes that are rented out for migrants. The state is paying on the high end $9,000 in rental assistance over a six-month period of time. With that comes help moving in and a starter kit to furnish the apartment. That rent lasts for six months and ideally people would have um, started their legal process, secured legal work authorization, and then be able to sustain that apartment. And so the the cost, or I guess the, the payment towards the landlord is based on market rate. It's based on the configuration of the apartment, how many rooms, where it's located, all of those things. And so it, it kind of varies from place to place. We ran out of time, but I did reach out to the city to see how many asylum seekers are currently taking advantage of the rental assistance program. We haven't heard back from the city on that. The city put $4 million towards helping migrants get temporary housing. The state added $38 million to that. And right now, there are only 30 to 40 case management workers from Catholic charities working to get thousands of migrants temporary housing. And I'm told there's a push to hire. Talk. I'm so sick of these people including the current president. You're not going to believe this. Actually, yes, you will. Let me show you something. Let me pick myself down to a little guy, because you'll be mad about this. Hotels are making millions of dollars off the migrant crisis in the United States, especially New York. Let me explain, because you'll be mad. The government are paying fancy hotels to house thousands of migrants. But let me break the math down to you. These fancy hotels are no longer open to the public. They are only exclusive for the migrants because the government is paying the hotels to house every single migrant. But wait till you see the map. These are the expensive luxury hotels allegedly by Hilton. These hotels have over 30 floors in them and they're housing migrants on every floor and closed to the public. But wait till you hear the map. Now you go look on Google. The Rowe Hotel is closed until further notice. The government told the Rowe Hotel and all these other luxury hotels that they will pay all the rent to house these migrants in their luxury hotels. The hotels are loving this because it's guaranteed money and it's maximum capacity. These hotel rooms are $200 a night. And with 1,331 rooms at $200 a night, that is $260,000 a day, $7.2 million per month per hotel. And the government is guaranteeing these hotels this money to house these migrants. And it's the same government that could care less about black people. TikTok, that's $36 million a month just at these five hotels. $36 million a month, but they're telling us we can't give reparations, but y'all can give migrants our reparations? Because that's all they're doing is giving them reparations to be here. TikTok, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Because this one blows my mind. That they got all this money for these migrants that they claim they never had. But yet they got $36 million a month for all these, just these five hotels. Just these five hotels is $36 million a month to house migrants in these hotels at full capacity. Today this hotel is fully occupied. All 1,025 rooms completely booked full of illegal migrant families being housed here at a cost of $6,000 per month per family. That's $75 million in taxpayer money used here at this one hotel in Midtown Manhattan. The worst part of the story, this hotel is owned by the Pakistani government. That's right, the same government that housed Osama bin Laden is now getting $75 million a year from American taxpayers to house families that are here illegally in America. We wanted to show you just how much asylum seekers are getting in some of our biggest blue cities, starting right here in New York. If you're a migrant, you're guaranteed housing, some of them being placed in hotel rooms that average $300 a night. Then a number of those migrants qualify to be part of the $53 million debit card pilot program. That means they are handed $1,000 on a debit card each and every month. Add SNAP benefits on top of that, and we're talking an additional $1,400. In Los Angeles, migrants are given full coverage health insurance and soon could also get $1,000 a month through the city's new guaranteed income pilot program, which is immigration status blind. That means 
you could get it even if you're not here legally. And in Chicago, they so far have spent $300 million since 2023 on migrants. That's on things like food and even laundry. As part of that spending, it's going towards rental assistance. If you're a migrant there, you could get up to 15,000. <laughs> ¿Cuántos meses es eso? Como siete meses. ¿Y han tenido que pagar alimento? No, no, no. Nada. No he pagado nada. ¿Es, es 100% gratis? Sí, sí. ¿Y le dan almuerzo, desayuno? Sí. No sí, le dan. Cosas cosas de niños, personales, nuevas pañales, lo que necesiten ellos. ¿Y ahí en el hotel hacen limpieza de las fuerzas? Sí, 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 así. Sí, todos los días hacen limpieza, cambian las sábanas, hacen aseo. ¿Todos los días hacen eso? Sí, sí todos los días. ¿Han podido poder conseguir trabajo ustedes? No, no no. no. no yo no. Si ustedes tuvieron un problema de medicina, ¿cómo podrían recibir ayuda con eso? Bueno, eh, con una tarjeta, la, la del seguro de Medicare. Y la Metroplu, y, nosotros y la tenemos la Metroplu y eso nos abarca el seguro que nosotros necesitamos para los niños y también nosotros nos beneficiamos de eso. ¿Se sintieron apoyados gracias a nuestro presidente Joe Biden? Bueno, sí. Sí, porque... Eh, si no estamos trabajando y nada, él es el que nos está ayudando prácticamente. Entonces, ¿quién, quién está apoyándoles en todo eso? ¿Sería el gobierno? El gobierno. Bueno, el gobierno. el gobierno. La verdad, el gobierno, pero no sé. En realidad, no sé. ¿Y ustedes saben que los ciudadanos de la Nueva York que están pagando por todo eso, cierto? Es su dinero de los impuestos. No, no sé. No sé. ¿Supieron eso? ¿Por cuánto tiempo han estado quedándose aquí en el Rojo Hotel? Yo llegué en julio. ¿Cuántos meses es eso? Como siete meses. ¿Y han tenido que pagar alimento? No, no, no. Nada. No he pagado nada. ¿Es 100% gratis? Sí, sí. ¿Y le dan almuerzo, desayuno? Sí. No, sí, le dan. Cosas de niños, personales, nuevas pañales, lo que necesiten ellos. Y ahí en el hotel hacen limpieza de las fuerzas. Sí, 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 así. Sí, todos los días hacen limpieza, cambian las sábanas. ¿Todos los días hacen eso? Sí, todos los días. ¿Han podido poder conseguir trabajo ustedes? No, no, no. no. We keep talking about the Venezuelan immigrants, but no one seems to know why they came over in abundance. Do a video on that. Sure! I know one thing, they came over here in abundance illegally. I know that for sure. They came over here abundantly illegal. Yes. Okay, that's one thing. Two things for sure. I know it requires a U.S. citizen more paperwork to get into Venezuela than it takes Venezuelans to get into the U.S. You want to do a video on that? Because it seems like you're missing a point. The point is, I said in the video that you're replying to, every 48 to 72 hours, there is over 100,000 people cross that damn border untouched. Meanwhile, my black ass couldn't get into Venezuela without a damn passport. You can forget about it. What they would do? Send me back home. Send them home. Hell is you talking about? Stop missing the point. TTG, time to go. We keep talking about the Venezuelan immigrants, but no one seems to know why they came over in abundance. Do a video on that. Sure. I know one thing, they came over here in abundance illegally. I know that for sure. They came over here abundantly illegal. Yes. Okay, that's one thing. Two things for sure. I know it requires a U.S. citizen more paperwork to get into Venezuela than it takes Venezuelans to get into the U.S. You want to do a video on that? Because it seems like you're missing a point. The point is, I said in the video that you're replying to, every 48 to 72 hours, there is over 100,000 people crossing that damn border untouched. Meanwhile, my black ass couldn't get into Venezuela without a damn passport. You can forget about it. What they would do? Send me back home. Send them home. Hell is you talking about? Stop missing the point. TTG, time to go. So you have Americans saving up their life savings to be able to stay in a luxury hotel. And immigrants are just being handed the key? What? Meanwhile, they just want us to vote. Vote, vote, vote for what? For who? Trump borderline racist. The Democrats giving all our money to the immigrants. So, who do you want us to vote for? When it seems like no one is concerned about our best interests. They're pursuing their own. Kamala's parents are immigrants. You don't think she's going to protect immigrants? Trump just care about his agenda. You think he's going to protect us? As if just by him doing mass deportation, that's going to solve all the rest of the issues we have going on. So they're getting free hotels. 
free money, free stamps. Meanwhile, our homeless people are still on the streets and getting locked up because now it's against the law. Basically, it is illegal for you to be homeless in America. So what if the police catch you on the side of the road being homeless? Because clearly homelessness is a fucking choice. You mean to tell me you can pull me over? Well, not pull me over because I'm not driving. You can stop me. Wait, you ain't got to stop me because I'm stable on the sidewalk. You can walk up on me. And give me a motherfucking citation, a ticket, for being out here on these streets. Because this is clearly where I want to be. I mean, where else would I want to be? I'm homeless. Where else would I fucking want to be? And after I done accumulated all these motherfucking tickets, because y'all done caught me on Martin Luther King, y'all done caught me on Door Highway, y'all done caught me. Once I accumulate all these tickets, eventually, you know, y'all going to, what, take me to jail? Where in the fuck? Are they getting these people that are in office? Where are they getting them? It's fucking illegal to be homeless. As if being homeless is a choice. What is America coming to? Why is nobody talking about this? How did we let this shit pass? How did we as Americans allow this law to be passed? How does these laws trump our rights as american citizens what is going on in america states with the most homeless people in the united states number three florida in florida one of the sunniest and most tourist heavy states in the united states approximately 31,000 people are homeless this situation is exacerbated by the lack of affordable housing and frequent natural disasters such as hurricanes which destroy homes and worsen the plight of vulnerable individuals number two new york new york also faces a significant homelessness crisis with 103,000 people living without homes new york city alone accounts for a large portion of this figure with thousands of people residing in temporary shelters or on the streets the primary cause is the high cost of living, particularly the exorbitant rent prices, which make it difficult for many residents to secure housing. Number one, California. California, the most populous state in the United States, has the highest number of homeless individuals, with 181,000 people living without homes. Los Angeles and San Francisco are particularly affected by this crisis. The skyrocketing property prices, housing shortages, and high population density contribute significantly to this alarming situation. I had no place to go. Nobody was helping me. I go to social services. I did all kinds of stuff. I made 15,000 phone calls, and nobody would help me. Before that, I was at a motel. They did put me up in a motel for a little while, um, but they wouldn't extend my uh, motel stay. And then I was out in the street again. So then I had no place to stay. And that was the very first day I was actually out on the street where I had no place to go. And then he helped me. I mean, I'm old. I don't, I don't want to live by myself somewhere. This is my biggest thing. I didn't want to be in the woods all by myself, you know, and, and be scared. Here, here I have, you know, there's people here who are so nice and everybody's kind to me here. And, and, and this is a great, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing to have. At least you have this, you know? Yeah, we're, we're very vulnerable and susceptible to the whims of the government. Uh, they can come in here and, and shut this down for, you know, for any reason they want to dream up, you know, and create. You know, because it's a good camp, good people. They're, you know, they take their garbage and they bag it up. And I, I take it out of here. It's a clean camp. It's an orderly camp. It's a, it's a good camp and the good people. And so, you know... There should be camps like this around America. If people can't afford housing, this gives them freedom, it gives them community, it gives them all kinds of aspects that they need as an individual, you know, and we're complicated beings and we need, uh, we need a complicated uh, type system uh, to live in. My breakfast skillet. Gotta have it ready for the morning. So yeah, Victoria was sleeping on the bench outside of the library, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was no cushion on this bench at all. No, like this was a hard bench, and she no. was there for weeks, you yeah. know, sleeping on this bench. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, so. <laughs> and, there, and there is no shelter you can go to, right? Mm -mm. Just now, any in this county? No. Yeah, well, we got shoes. Shoes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I like that. You like those? Yeah. Oh, those okay. are like sneakers. Yeah, oh, they yeah. are. Yeah. Can I have them? Yeah, certainly. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're yours. Oh, God. 
this is wonderful, Steve. I had no place to go. Nobody was helping me. I go to social services. I did all kinds of stuff. I made 15,000 phone calls, and nobody would help me. Before that, I was at a motel. They did put me up in a motel for a little while, um, but they wouldn't extend my uh, motel stay. And then I was out in the street again. So then I had no place to stay, and that was the very first day I was actually out on the street where I had no place to go, and then he helped me. This was the precise moment I no longer was a Democrat. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Okay. That was the precise moment that I knew I was leaving the Democratic Party. Because I was a two-time bone cancer survivor. I voted for Obama-Biden based on Obamacare. And when it was implemented in 2010, I ended up losing my insurance. I went from an insurance plan that was 185 a month with a thousand dollar deductible to that policy being canceled because it no longer met the requirements of Obamacare. And I was left with the cheapest option being 1200 a month, $6,000 deductible. 185 a month, thousand dollar deductible to $1,200 a month, $6,000 deductible. I went 10 years without insurance and I was penalized each year because I could no longer afford insurance. And in 2016, every single Democrat candidate up on that debate stage raised their hand and said they would give illegals free health care. While me as a two-time bone cancer survivor lost mine. Didn't have insurance for 10 years and I was supposed to get CT scans, chest x-rays, and all these other tests done every six months to ensure my cancer didn't come back. And they wanted to give illegals free health care. That was the exact moment I was no longer a Democrat. Let me tell you how we're not taking care of our own in this country. So the migrants that they've imported to New York illegally, 175,000 of them, have had over $1 billion spent on them just in 2023, not even including this year. They're giving a family of four illegal immigrants $1,400 a month for food. They give Americans on SNAP benefits, which is the supplemental nutrition program, only seven thirteen a month for a family of four. Well, veteran who has a spouse and a child is only making like, $1,152 a month. And that's for a disabled veteran who gets paid for a spouse and a child. Tell me how in the world we keep doing so much more for everyone else and not taking care of our own people. I mean, the billions of dollars we've sent to Ukraine could literally provide health care for everyone in this country. It could provide free college for people that wanted to go or free trade school. It is just crazy to me how we get the butt of the gun every damn time. It's ridiculous. We have to take care of our own. This election coming up is important, y'all. I'm running for District 20 Senate in Georgia, and I'm telling you what, if we don't elect the right people, we're gonna continue to spiral down the toilet, and I'm not sure that we can even recover electing the right people. Um, we need more people to get out and do their civic duty. We need more people to vote. Only 20% of people vote in the primaries in a presidential election year. If you don't vote, you can't complain, but get out Figure out who your people are, research them. Let's clean the swamp. People that have, there are people that need, we need term limits. We've got people who um, have corporate interests. They don't really have the American people at heart. They don't care about the blue collar worker, or the people that struggle to pay for food and gas. And yeah, they, they uh, suspend the gas tax and turn around and take it out of this $16 billion surplus that we have here in Georgia that they could do so much with. And they just tax us to death. Think about it. We've got to elect the right people this cycle. Daily Mail went down to the Roosevelt Hotel, the hotel in New York City that is housing asylum seekers, and decided to interview a few of them and found out that some of these migrants are making up to $3,000 a month doing food delivery services while living for free at the Roosevelt. Full-on maid service, free meals, laundry service, 
You have this guy right here, 24 year old, single adult military age man staying at the Roosevelt Hotel. Says he's making up to as much as $1,500 every two weeks by delivering food and other items, even though he doesn't have a working license. And keep in mind that the majority of these people, they do not have legitimate asylum claims. So they're not here legally. They're making money while living at a luxury hotel. How many American citizens are struggling so bad under inflation? They're struggling to pay their rent. They're struggling to buy groceries. They're struggling to fill up their cars with gas. And now you have people that entered our country illegally. Most of them aren't going to have legitimate asylum claims. They're staying in Times Square at a luxury hotel, raking in the dough. Also, Regular food delivery drivers, American citizens that have been using these food delivery apps, now they're making less money because the market is becoming more saturated with all of the people coming over the border and into New York City. And I think that the way that they're doing this, like DoorDash and, and Uber Eats and all these places, they'll they'll say that this isn't happening, but they're also paying other people that have legitimate accounts. So they'll pay them like once a month or once every few weeks so they can use their accounts to deliver the food and stuff like that. want to talk politics um, never have been I try to stay out of those conversations I've always respected what everyone feels and thinks I still do but I don't think a lot of you understand what's happening in our country right now mainly because most of you don't live in a sanctioned city um, I live in Denver um, so the people that are living in these sanctioned cities we are slowly losing control of our city, um, our cities. 
and the government's not doing anything. Um, Governor Polis in Colorado, he is not doing anything about the apartment complex that has been taken over by Venezuelan gang members that have come over illegally. Um, they have robbed 10 gun shops in, in Denver in the past month. They are strapping up and this is just the first step. They're seeing what they can get away with. And so far they've been in this apartment complex for a almost a month. The police can't do anything about it. Haven't, we haven't brought in reinforcements and they're just living in this apartment complex they overtook and no one's doing anything. What do you think they're gonna do next? They're going to start overtaking more apartment complexes, more buildings, more facilities. OMG, y'all, y'all see how these gangs out here are doing in these different uh, states across the country, y'all. Y'all better stay safe, stay vigilant, protect yourself and your freaking family because these people, they don't care. They are not getting any sort of consequences for their actions. So you got to be ready to go. You got to be TTG, trained to go. Because it's go time. They brought them to this country to weaponize them to go against us. It's us against them. So y'all better get out of all of that racial stuff and, you know, class, I'm this, I got that. You better get out that mindset. You better be prepared to protect yourself. That's the mindset you need to be in. If everybody would band together, a lot of this stuff wouldn't even be going on, to be honest with you. People band together instead of thinking they better than one side and all of that. A lot of these people wouldn't be able to come here and take over this country like this. See, one thing about these rats, they don't like to lose. They sore losers. So they want to take as many people down with them as they can. And that's all they doing. All of this stuff been planned from the get-go, y'all. They are losing. They going against the people that, that's over them. So that should let you know something right there that it's go season and they using all of us as collateral damage. So I want y'all to just stay safe and, and take care of yourself because this stuff that's going on right now is very dangerous. So be cautious. Do you understand now why so many people have a problem with this? Do you understand now why this should be considered a problem? Because how is it all you have to do is come over here and you get a come up? Everybody gets to come to America and experience the American dream. But the people in America have to experience the American nightmare? Hell, some of us are still trying to figure it out. We haven't found the white, the picket, or the fence had a few dogs but we're struggling but people coming in are getting handouts you know those who are trying to do it the right way because let's all face it we know how to get money if we really need it to get money but some of us aren't willing to sacrifice our morals to do it our integrity our class and i'm gonna say this over and over again until we get it but the reason why this is such a huge problem is because of this. I did a video about what happens if you don't send money back home to another country. So my parents, they're immigrants. They're from a country called Laos, right? My parents went to Laos last month. And let me tell you guys about my mom's fucking cousins. It's her second cousin at that, okay? So I guess 30 years ago, my mom's mom, who is dead, she's been dead for 21 years, right? She owes somebody in Laos fucking 15, 20,000. I don't even fucking know the number. So when they see, when they found out my mom's coming to Laos last month, they're like, oh, by the way, your mom owes us 15 or 20,000, however much money it was. And they just think that people in America have so much money. Well, like, that's just not it. Whenever she did get to Laos, they emptied out her pockets, like, literally, like, took all the money she had because, and like, mind you, the lady who lives in Laos, my mom's cousin, it's a guy and a woman. A guy and a girl trying to like collect money from my mom saying that my mom owes their yeah anyways but the woman she is like a real estate lady out there she has four houses rents them all out like the bitch got money out there and it's like it's a thing though people in the other countries can be living good where they're at but they just want the american fucking money and they don't care they don't like they don't have no chill like they'll ask you they don't ask you how your day's going how's it going in america they don't give a fuck they just want money and they're gonna find every excuse in the book to get that shit okay and 
I hate that for my mom because my mom is such a kind person and she's so big hearted and she just like she feels obligated that she has to like give them money. She gave them a little bit, like a hundred or two hundred dollars, but a hundred or two hundred dollars in Laos is a lot of fucking money. Like some people only get paid two hundred dollars a month U.S. money there. So just imagine how far the two hundred dollars can go. And yeah, dude, my mom just feels obligated because my mom wants to go to Laos again, but she doesn't want to run into them. I'm like, mom, just don't talk to them, period. And she's like, they live next door to your dad's mom's house. What am I so like, mom, just <sighs> fuck them people back home. I just want you to look at something for a second. Look at your come up. If you live in Laos or you have family in Laos and you're in the United States and you're sending money back. Look at the conversion rate. Now look at the conversion rate for Venezuela. Uh huh. Why is it that everybody is able to come up off the U.S. dollar except U.S. citizens? Because where can we go? and come up like they can come here and come up but see this is the problem why do you think so many of them are able to send for their family members and their family members come over here open stores nail shop hair store gas station why do you think that is because everybody gets to come here and live the american dream but us the hell they are throwing money at immigrants meanwhile you can't get a loan to get a car meanwhile if you got credit card debt you can barely make it a payment arrangement but they getting them for free but we don't have money though right the united states is in debt right we busting our butt to barely survive barely feed families barely get jobs Less known, keep them because the government doesn't even protect us in the job market. These employers can fire you for what they want, when they want, how they want, with reason or not. So we're not even guaranteed jobs, but they're guaranteed money, a place to stay, not just any place, luxury, food. And when it runs out in one place, they just, you know, fly them to the next to start it all over again. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of individuals are sitting in eviction court right now because they can't pay their rent. I'm going to get into the story of how I lost everything, but that'll be something I cover in my membership with my confidants <laughs> because that's where we talk confidentially over there. But we're going to get into that story because this is insane. Dire damn bollocko that we have to sit back and watch individuals who according to our government should shouldn't be here get better treatment than those who live here that's crazy drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this whole thing we're gonna do a follow-up video on all of the people who have been unalived in the midst of this crisis but let me know what you think hit the like button for me consider joining the champagne gang the fizz fam become a confidant hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show consider supporting the channel everything that you see is designed and created by me so support your girl hit the cash app it is in the comment or consider grabbing one of those memberships Become a part of the Fizz fam, the Champagne Gang, or become a confidant. We'll be so glad to have you. And if you're not sure just yet, don't worry about it. We'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> Until next time, confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink till we meet again. Ta-ta.